Welcome to Attempsis All Seeing. As far as our opening hand goes, yes, we're going to keep on this one. I like it. We've got Force of Will, Force of Negation, and we're playing against Narset. So this is uh, some good Bizarro Magic versus Bizarro Magic. Kind of like that. So hopefully we can hold our own against Narset. It does help that we have Force of Negation and Force of Will. Um, hopefully we can cash in another uh, blue card for Force of Will. That way we can uh, have some free counter spells. But thankfully with Ancient Tomb and Devil Islands, we'll definitely be able to get off to a really nice start to this game but yes welcome to some attempts hope you're excited to go for some alternative win conditions it is always fun to do that let's go and lead off with the island and then uh, anything else we're gonna go and pass the turn over to our opponent we're playing attempts all seeing flying and then for a three mana activation draw two cards then discard a card uh, whenever attempts deals damage to an opponent um you may reveal your hand if you have at least six different cards uh, with converted mana cost revealed this way uh, that player loses the game do we want to go um I'm going to go force a wheel on this one. I feel like that, that might be a pretty good option just to kind of slow it down. Yeah, that's no, you know, let's go and let that go on through. Let, let's see if we can't find another card for force of will. Uh, we could always end up just actually just using it for actual Narset uh, herself, you know, unless they have Cavernous Souls, but we didn't see that come down. So I'll uh, go ahead and lead off with Island for next turn unless we draw into something really nice. There we go. Let's go and lead off with Island and then uh, anything else. We're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. Playing gets Narset Enlightened. Uh, first strike in uh, Hexproof, then whenever uh, Narset attacks, uh, exile the top four cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast Boros Signet. Sure, that'll work. Until end of turn, you may cast those cards without paying their mana cost. So uh, if you haven't had the uh, the pleasure of playing its Narset before, it's it's pretty gnarly. Not a ton of fun sometimes. And uh, hopefully we can... Uh, we can survive this one. All right, let's go and go Ancient Tomb. That's going to put us on for, you know, maybe engulf the shore if they give Narset haste somehow. Uh, that's going to allow us to go for fact or fiction. And now we're actually getting to the point where we can just cast Force of Negation, um, or actually just cast Force of Will if they end up going for Narset. They do to get to one more mana. They are sitting at five total mana. But uh, hopefully uh, this allows us to get some good stuff going. Preordain, sure, go for it. Uh, but yeah, as far as the Timsis goes, really excited about this commander. In fact, let's go and give a shout out to our sponsors and I'll jump into kind of covering what the deck is trying to do. Um, shout out to MTGO Traders. If you need to build your very own Timsis alternative win condition deck, uh, they certainly get you covered whatever, for whatever sort of converted mana cost cards you may need. And also shout out to InkGaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off your order. And you'll see you're in the market for a custom playmat. And last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to patreon uh, there's a link down in the description below get your name at the beginning or the ending of the credits and if you can't do that hey no problem just tell somebody about the channel so i'm just gonna go for a swan song yeah i feel that's fine that's gonna give us a 2-2 bird that's gonna give us a frankie token and we can start swinging in our opponent i think i kind of like that. that's gonna give us a 15 turn clock to uh start getting them so yeah that'll work so let's go island uh, let's go bird token and the cool thing about this deck is, let's go and get this combat step done, and I'll kind of talk about it. Um, we are definitely going for that alternative win condition. You can see we've got three, we have a five, three, four, and a six. So we've already got four cards in our hand, and actually land in the hand. So we just need one more different converted mana cost card to actually go for the attempts as win. So you can see where it's really not that hard to do a lot of setting up. And one of the ways that you can really ensure that you can potentially get that win is by uh, running a lot of card draw. You know, stuff like Force of Will, I mean, Force of Negation. Or, excuse me, fact or fiction, uh, this is, hey, this is a Good Morning Vietnam video. In fact, it's the first one of the morning. So if I make a little mistake or my voice is a little raspy, I do apologize. But we're jumping into it because uh, I'm really excited about Timsis. But uh, yeah, one of the ways you can get around it is by drawing some, uh, drawing a lot of cards. So we've got Alhamaret's Archive in here. Um, we have a lot of mana rocks in here too. That way we can go for one of those really nice like Pull from Tomorrow or Stroke of Genius. And so that's just a really good option for us to just really fuel our hand and then uh, go from there. So let's go and push in with this bird token. Frankie's going to be coming in hot. And I don't really remember Frankie being a owl looking bird from Swan Song. I always thought it was like kind of like a looking like the art on Swan Song. So anyway, we've got an owl on that. That's pretty cool. Let's go and knock our opponent down to 24. And uh, let's make sure we make the lane drop for the turn. I think at this point, since so we have no devotion, uh, we'll just end up going for island. Now, we can end up going for attempts, as that's going to be six total mana. And that still keeps us on for Force of Wheel, so you know, let's go and go for it. Yeah, I think we're fine with that. All right, this could be one, two, three, four. And get down for six. Now, if they do end up having some sort of spot removal or uh, counter spell for attempts, as, yeah, that's fine. I will go and let this go through. And if they're just going for Mystical Tutor, that'll work. Because we've still got Force of Will to kind of stop whatever they're going to try to push. Okay, Pudd is going to go for Supreme Verdict. And unfortunately, with Supreme Verdict, uh, that is definitely uh, not going to... We're going to be able to counter that. Can't be countered. So that's going to catch us off. 
But with Crush of Cannon, uh, Tentacles, uh, we can certainly get that six man. Even if we just want to go for a tempo play, we can send everything back to their hand. Or if we get to the point where we can go for the surge option, um, we can make an 8-8 token, and that'll be uh, really nice. Now, we can't counter this spell, so that's going to get rid of Frankie. Unfortunately, we had a really nice Air Force going, uh, but that is going to get rid of it. So it's going to kick it back over. But we've got some land drops to make, and that is uh, definitely not the end of the world. You can definitely see there's a very nice theme of just bouncing stuff back. Just really want to make this a nice tempo deck. Um, let's go Command Beacon. We're going to go for a Timsis again. Yeah, let's do that. I think I kind of like that. All right, so we're going to put a Timsis into our hand. And that's going to allow to get uh, Timsis down. And then hopefully we can uh, kind of threaten to win. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That'll feel pretty good. All right, we'll get a Timsis down. And then uh, we're going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. So whenever we do swing in... We've got five, three, four, six, and then another four, and then a zero. So we do have five out of the six for attempts. So if we get lucky next turn, let's say we draw to one of our cantrips, uh, elixir of mortality, ponder, preordain, something like that. Or if we draw to one of our two drops, we've got anticipate, arcane denial, cyclonic rift. Um, if they don't have an answer for attempts, we might be able to close it out against Narset, and that will uh, that'll feel really nice. Okay, Pot is going to go path to exile on attempts. And that does, yeah, let's go ahead and go Force of Will. Force of Will on Path to Exile, because that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, actually, they don't have haste for Narset, so we can always bounce Narset back to the hand. But that does get rid of the counter option for Narset. You know what, let's just go and let this go on through. I think that's fine. We get another island down, we can get down Nykthos, and then it'll still put us in the same spot where we can recast a Timsis, because we actually just brought a Timsis out of the command zone, so... Uh, we can definitely live with that. One of the main things is we're going to keep Narset off the battlefield. And if we can go for something like Crush and send all of these artifacts back to their hand, um, that's going to give us a really nice tempo play to kind of reset. So um, if anything, we'll probably end up going for Crush of Tentacles next turn. I think that'll be pretty good. All right, so Swiftfoot Boots. Let's go Shrine down. Now if we go Boots, yeah, that's going to be just enough for the Surge cost. And I like that. So yeah, let's do that. So let's go 1-2 off of Ancient Tomb. We're going to have Swiftfoot Boots enter the battlefield. We're going to go Crush of Tentacles. Cast off the Surge option. Okay, that's going to give us an 8-8. Eight, eight. And then uh, anything else, we're going to go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, we did uh, unfortunately get Swiftfoot Boots back to our hand. But um, at this point, yeah, we're perfectly fine. Cyclonic Rift on an 8-8 eight, eight. Octopus. Now, we can go for Force of Negation. I mean, excuse me, Force of Will if we wanted to. You know, we'll go and let that go on through. That's fine. If they're going to burn Psychotic Rift on that, but we can still set up a Timsis. And once we get that card draw going, we'll be in a really good spot. So we're going to go and pass the turn. Because what I'm thinking about doing is we can actually use Force of Negation uh, to hit one of those Signets. Because if they don't make the land drop, then it probably looks like they're a little bit tight on mana. In fact, let's go and go for that. Let's go um, Force of Negation on engulf, engulf the Shore. Because at this point, we just really want to bottleneck them on mana. Okay, so we've drawn to Rogue's Passage. Go ahead and make the land drop front down for the turn. And we're looking at attempts. This is going to be eight total mana. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So let's go ahead and go for attempts. Okay, we're going to have attempts into the battlefield. And even if we are kind of getting low on resources in the hand, one thing that we can do is we can still end up using that uh, two ability. They're going to go for a counter spell. Um, let's go ahead and go force. We're going to exile um, Whelming Wave. There we go. Uh, we're going to Force of Will on Counterspell. We'll have attempts to enter the battlefield, and then we can just start digging into our library a little bit deeper. I feel like our opponent has... Um, our opponent's going to scoop it up on this one, but I will... Uh, I'll still go and post this one up in some form or fashion. You know, playing against an R set is uh, pretty gnarly sometimes. And so the game wasn't over yet, but if our opponent's going to scoop it up on this one, especially against an R set, uh, we're going to toss this one up as a win. So uh, this is pretty much what this deck wants to do. You know, Timsis is kind of a tempo style deck. We're going to send stuff back to our opponent's hand and then uh, just counter different things like that. So and then once we get a Timsis down, if they are low on resources, we basically just go for the three mana ability, start drawing some cards, and then hopefully that'll get us to a point where we can close it out with Timsis. But... It's always nice to wrestle down Tarsa, uh, Narset and get the win. So, anyways, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Atemsis All Seeing. As far as our opening hand goes, yes, I like it. We're going to keep on this one. We've got to study. And look at the art on this card. I love it. This is uh, <laughs> some wild looking art. I love this old school look. Uh, we've got Sleep. We've got Mindstone. We've got Hercules Recall against an artifact deck, which uh, sounds pretty fun. So, uh, hopefully, that'll kind of help us out. Let's go lead off with Island. 
And then I think that'll be good. And anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. So we're playing a Tempsis, all seeing, flying. Then for a three mana activation, draw two cards, then discard a card. Then whenever a Tempsis deals damage to an opponent, not combat damage, just damage. So you can see where we can make that study work. And I'll kind of explain that in a second. And let's see, Trophy Mage. Okay, that's off to a pretty good start. Let's go Island, go Mindstone. And we'll be able to go for Trophy Mage to grab a three mana rock that'll work out perfectly, and then we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. Uh, whenever Timsis deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. If you have six different converted mana cost cards, uh, that player loses the game. Playing against Muzio, pretty sure that's how you say it, but that's how it's going to be for the video, so if that is wrong, um, I do apologize, and we'll cover that here in just a second. Let's go Trophy Mage. Yeah, we don't really have any counter magic, so we might as well just go and jam it real quick. So we're going to go Trophy Mage. Um, we could grab... Pretty sure I don't I think all we really have at the three drop is mana rock, so that'll be good for it. Yeah. And I think at this point between shrine, just in case we need that extra blue mana, uh let's just go and well actually worn power stone will help us get ahead on mana. I think I like that a little bit better. But that does put us at only two blue. Yeah, let's go chromatic lantern. If we could do um worn power stone, but with chromatic lantern, I feel that like it's gonna turn stuff like we don't have a ton of utility lands in here, but if we just get unlucky and don't run into a lot of islands, then we might be a little bit bottlenecked on blue mana, which doesn't sound that fun. So and then our opponent's gonna pass the turn again. Let's go and go chromatic lantern. Oh, there we go. Run into an island. Uh, so let's go island, let's go chromatic lantern. They're going to go for negate, counter target creature. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we can still end up, that's going to put us at five mana. If we hit the lane drop next turn, that'll allow us to go for uh, a Tim's. So that, that won't be the end of the world. So let's go and push him with a trophy mage. Just going to put them down to 28. And then we uh, kick it back over. So playing against Muzio, visionary architect. And then for a four mana activation, look at the top X cards of your library. Where X is the highest converted mana cost among artifacts that you control. You may reveal an artifact card from among them. Put it onto the battlefield. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in. A random order, so kind of like that. Arcane Denial. Now, what we can do is if we want to get another surge with um, with Trophy Mage, we can go for Aether Rise, which I think that's what we might end up doing. We can also just kind of go for a, a little bit of a tempo play and just go for... Uh, that'll put us the next turn just going for Trophy Mage and then casting it. But if we hit the land drop, that'll be pretty good for us. Yeah, let's do that. Just because we just don't really have a lot of good stuff going on. And so, um, I think that'll be good. All right, so that's going to bring Trophy Mage back to him. A little expensive, but, I mean, if you look at our hand, there's just really uh, not a lot of value going on. So, uh, Trophy Mage is going to give us another artifact. At least just gives us something to do. and grab that Warm Power Stone. That'll kind of help propel us into a little bit of higher mana. Uh, we did cover both commanders. Let's give a quick shout-out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to build your very own Atemsis alternative win condition deck, be sure to head on over there. They've got all the different converted man cost cards uh, that you may need. And also, shout-out to InkGaming.com. You can use coupon code JOLT to uh, get 10% off your order. If you're in the market for a custom playmat or something like that, uh, let's go for Trophy Mage. That'd be good. Unfortunately, we're still going to miss out on that. Uh, we can go Tezzeret, which is going to allow us to untap um, Mindstone. Or we can just straight up just go for a Tezzeret activation. Let's do this. Let's go Trophy Mage. That's going to give us at least a blocker. And then hopefully we can just kind of set up. We've got Devotion for Tezzeret. We can do a few other things. And if things get a little bit nutty, we still have Hercules Recall. So let's go Trophy Mage. We're going to grab that Worn Power Stone. And then that'll still put us on Arcane Denial to at least stop something from our opponent. So... I will go and pass the turn. And also, last but not least, I started a Patreon. So if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon, there's a link down in the description below. Gives your name and the credits of my videos. And if you can't do that, hey, no problem. Tell somebody about the channel. Then I would be uh, much obliged, much appreciated on that. So but I'm just going to go for Soul Ring. But now it's officially free time. Uh, we can have some fun. Whenever a Timsis was spoiled, I was super excited about a Timsis. It's just one of those... I don't know what it is about going for alternative wind conditions. If you haven't seen my Golos Maces in deck, I highly recommend it. It is a lot of fun. Um, let's go Arcane Denial on this one. Yeah, we don't want that much mana. So let's go Arcane Denial. That does give them some card draw. It gives us a little bit of card draw. Um, if they've got a counter spell that they need to burn on Arcane Denial, that'll actually work out perfectly because we can at least go for Hercules Recall uh, to kind of send it back to their hand. But at least going for Arcane Denial on Gauntlet, that'll give us an opportunity to not stop that extra mana with Future Sight on the battlefield. All right, so we're going to be able to get that to stick. Uh, but yeah, whenever they release the Timsis, they're like, oh yeah, <laughs> can't wait to play that. And the uh, the cool thing with the Timsis is it's really not that hard to do. I mean, you can see we've got a 2, a 4, a 2, and a 5, and a 3. So we've, we're like 
almost a four out of six on the way there. If we run into a land or something like that, that's five out of six. So really, if you're just playing mono blue draw go, I mean, it's kind of like a really good control style commander. And that's pretty much what this deck is going for. So uh, opponents can be able to draw two cards. Let's make sure we put our trigger uh, going on the stack uh, second. And uh, that way we can get that card draw first. And all right, so we do draw into an island. And I think at this point, since our opponent's not really putting a lot of pressure on us, we might just end up going for Tezzeret. That might be pretty good. So we go Island. And that's going to be Tezzeret coming down. Then we go for the minus X ability. We can end up going for four if we want to completely get rid of Tezzeret. But I think I kind of like Tezzeret sticking around on the battlefield. So we can even just go for something like Soul Ring. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go Mind Stone. We're going to have Tezzeret enter the battlefield. Because one of the things that you can do with this deck, there's a lot of ramp in here. So we're running the full Tezzeret package that helps us kind of build up a nice board state. And uh, one of the things that you can do is just, you know, if even if you're going for an attempt to win, you can actually just use her as a support, uh, like a plan B for the deck. You know, if we end up getting enough card draw, and uh, we build up enough of a value board state to where it's just hard for our opponent to do anything with that, then we can uh, really get some good stuff done. Now, do we want to go Mana Crypt? It's going to be one, two. Yeah, I think we want to go Mana Crypt. That, that'll be pretty good. So let's go with minus X. So we're going to grab Mana Crypt, put Mana Crypt onto the battlefield, and that allows us to go for one Power Stone. So we'll, we'll grab that. It's going to be one, two, three, four. And that'll put us at one extra mana for Tezzeret, but uh, Devotion. But yeah, I think that's okay. We'll, we'll just tap down for one Power Stone. It's not really going to matter. So we're going to have one Power Stone enter the battlefield. And then uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over to opponent. Definitely going to leave up Trophy Mage as a blocker. And then we'll kick it back over there. So I'm um, trying to keep up what's on top of our opponent's library. Um, it's a little hard sometimes while giving commentary and explaining a new deck. But uh, I will definitely try my best. So uh, we do see that Everflowing Chalice is on top. And uh, once we kind of, uh, you know, we've got all the mana going right now. We're going to be slowly building towards Devotion. That's going to be another good mana spot. So we'll probably just end up going uh, Timsis. Um, and just start really filtering through our library. We need to get some sort of uh, counter magic to fight our opponent, especially since we are playing against uh, Mono Blue. All right, so our opponent did get down the Architect, and that still puts them at having Everflowing Chalice in the hand. Um, and this is a, it's not an artifact creature, so we can't bounce it back with Hercules Recall. But if they do end up, you know, here's the downside. We've got Hercules Recall. Uh, one of the cool things about this deck is that we can, we're going to cross off uh, Everflowing Chalice. Uh, one of the cool things is that um, you can actually use Hercules Recall on yourself. You know, let's say that we've got the two, and that's going to put us at four. So we've got two different cards. Oh, okay, so it's going to bounce everything we've got back to the hand. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so that will end up going for that. Uh, we can still kind of rebound and end up going for... It's not that huge of a setback. We can end up going Mind Stone, Mana Crypt, and if we want to, we can actually just go for Hercules Recall, and it's going to bounce the Everflung Challenge. So that'll kind of basically be like the reset for the turn. Um, not the end of the world. I and mean, thankfully, this is, uh, it's like not during our end step, or we have to discard everything. So <laughs> we'll definitely take that. So let's see what we draw into, then I'll kind of talk about some of the little strategy parts I was about to talk about. So, we, ooh, there we go. We've got our very own Cyclonic Rift, so that's going to put us at 4, 5, uh, 6, 7. Yeah, let's just go for it. Uh, that's going to be Mana Crypt. We're going to have Mana Crypt enter the battlefield. We're going to have the Land Drop. That's going to put us at 5, 6, 7, 8. We can go for Mind Stone. Oh, yeah, th this is beautiful. I love it. Uh, we're going to go Cyclonic Rift Overloaded. <laughs> All right, so we're going to send everything back. They control back to their hand, and uh, this is very fitting. I like it. So hopefully we can bounce back a little bit quicker than this. Uh, oh, look at that. All right, I like that. Uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn back over to our opponent. So we can go Tezzeret the Seeker next turn, and um, we'll see exactly what we're going to grab. Probably just end up grabbing uh, Archive. So that's going to put us on going for the plus one with Tezzeret, because once we get down Archive, um, Alphamoret's Archive, that's going to allow us to draw an extra card. Um, once we draw past our first card for the turn. So imagine that we go for the activation off of Timsis, um, draw two cards, that's going to be four cards, then discard a card. That's really going to allow us to fuel up. Um, another option that we can go for off of Tezzeret is if we want to end up going Lightning Greaves. Um, that's going to give us a really hasty option that we can try to swing in and get that win condition. But um, as long as we can just get the card draw going, uh, that's really going to allow us to kind of fuel the hand. Now, as far as building an Timsis deck, you don't really have to go that crazy with the Timsis. Um, it's one of those decks that it's just like, you know, just do what you would normally do in a mono blue control deck. You know, things like Trophy Mage, it's a really good option to find a mana rock. Um, Tezzer's going to help you out getting down if you're, you know, uh, Timsis is six mana, so you're probably going to need some 
amount of mana rock. So simply just having like Tezzeret built in here, that kind of helps fill in some of those weird spots. You've got some surge costs you can put in here. You've got converted mana cost things you can do. Um, it just works out really well that you can do a lot of really good things. Uh, with the actual deck. Now what we may end up doing is we may end up going for sleep next turn. That's going to completely cut off our opponent off any sort of activations uh, with stuff like Metal Worker. So we'll probably end up going for that. Um, just like, as a little bit of a tempo play. Uh, but let's see what they end up doing for the rest of the turn. Okay, they're going to make uh, Metal Worker a blue creature. Ooh, and they're going to go for Paradox Engine. Now here's the deal. So I ain't playing one versus one commander. Um, that's why we're starting out at 30 life. And in one versus one commander, um, Paradox Engine was not banned during the last update. So um, that is why Paradox Engine is still legal uh, right now. This is a current video, but um, that's why Paradox Engine is popping up in one versus one commander. <laughs> it's not a lot of fun, and it's, uh, it's a little brutal. You know, it's kind of one of those things where some of these cards, like when Paradox Engine gets banned in multiplayer commander, oh, that makes sense. Paradox Engine, it's kind of one of those cards that the longer it sticks around, um, it's just, it just, it's colorless, it's five mana, and it does a really, really strong effect. It just enables some really busted things sometimes. You can see what our opponent's doing by just generating a ton of mana uh, with Metal Marker, uh, Metal Worker and Grand Architect. And so, um, anyway, it's unbanned in one versus one commander. I don't know if it ever will be banned in one versus one, so we'll kind of see what's going on. But at this point right now, they draw the Minarch. I want to let them kind of work through some of the mechanics of this. I don't, I don't know if they actually have a combo right now, but I'm going to let them do this, and then we'll, we'll kind of stop and see what's going on. Okay, and excuse me. Yeah, they don't have a combo. They just simply just get down to Minarch. Now, what we need to do is we need to find an answer for Paradox Engine, because that is not going to be good. Not going to be good for us. We can buy us a little bit of time with Hercules Recall. Uh, let's go and choose Tails on this Mana Crypt Trigger. One the flip. We are one for one on those Mana Crypt Triggers. And then let's see. You run into... Oh. Run into Mana Drain. That is a very good way to stop Paradox Engine. Uh, beautiful draw. I'll take that. So we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8. We have 9 total mana. We need to leave up at least 4 mana for Hercules Recall. You know what? Since they are going to get off to a pretty good start, if we just end up going... I think I like this. So we're going to go Sleep. We're going to tap our opponent's creatures. That way they don't get the Metal Worker. They don't get Grand Architect. Because they have to tap an untapped blue creature to really take advantage of this. So we're going to go for Sleep. Um, let's go for Hercules Recall. And the main thing that we want to stop right now, we definitely want to deal with Minarch, but if we can just deal with Paradox Engine, uh, that'll be a really good option for us. So we're going to go for uh, Hercules Recall. That's going to send everything back to their hand, and we're still going to leave up Mana Drain. So we're just simply just going to go and pass the turn over to our opponent. This has been a, uh, a very good mono-blue matchup. <laughs> a lot of back and forth. We had back-to-back -back Psychotic Rifts. We're uh, blowing each other's board states up. Opponents threatening some really nasty stuff with Paradox Engine. And so uh, we're going to have to a pretty good little start right here. I'm kind of digging this. And uh, we'll see what else they get down for the turn. But what we'll probably try to do is end up going for Tezzeret. Because the longer our opponent sticks around on the battlefield, the, the worse it is for us. So we might end up just going at Timsis uh, just to get some sort of clock on our opponent. Um, if anything, just simply just threatening that draw two cards and discard a card ability is, is a good thing for us. Uh, Future Sight, as much as we don't like that, that's perfectly fine. The big payoff card that we need to watch out for is um, going to be Paradox Engine. That, that's just going to be really hard for us to beat in this mono blue deck, especially with us already going for Psychonic Rift and Hercules Recall. That, that's just not going to be a lot of fun. Okay, they will end up going for Metal Worker. Yeah, because even if we just go Mana Drain on that, as much as that can generate some mana, our main issue at this point right now is the Grand Architect. So, um, yeah, we'll simply just go and let's go ahead and pass it back over to our turn. So let's go Mana Crypt. We're going to go and choose Tails on this Mana Crypt trigger. There we go. Two for two on those Mana Crypt triggers. And uh, we draw into another island. So let's go island. That's going to put us at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's going to put us at 10 total mana. So we can end up going for a Timsis. Let's do that because they're tapped out. If they end up going for Worn Power Stone next turn, uh, that'll be a pretty good option for us. We're going to have a Timsis enter the battlefield. Uh, we maybe could have sequenced that just a little bit differently with untapping some artifacts. But we definitely want to leave up Mana Drain. And while we do have a Timsis up, let, let's just go for Study on a Tempsis. That way we can, maybe we can get into a weird spot to where we can untap our creatures somehow. At least we can target Metal Worker or something that's a 1-1 that they get on the battlefield. So that still keeps us open on Mana Drain. Uh, we've got the activated abilities from a Tempsis that we can go for next turn. Uh, we're actually sitting okay on converted mana costs in the hand. We've got a 3 and a 4, 3 and a 5, excuse me. So that's 2 out of 6. So if we can get a little bit of better card draw going, we can definitely dump Worn Power Stone as our 3 draw. 
and that we could slowly start working towards uh, getting a few extra cards in our hand. But for the most part, we're definitely going to be using this Mana Drain uh, for that Paradox Engine. If they've got Counter Magic in the hand, so be it. Um, but we have to force this Mana Drain. And uh, what? Uh, oh, excuse me. They just went for the uh, reveal off of Metal Worker. So you can see where we're really getting to the nitty gritty part uh, right now with how good of a deck like this can be, especially with Grand Architect and Metal Worker on the battlefield. Okay, so let's go ahead and go for this Mana Drain on Paradox Engine. That's going to be double blue. And like I said, they've got Counter Magic. They did reveal most of their hand, and I think that's going to be most of it. Now, we did see Consecrated Sphinx. If that does happen, that's going to be very rough for us. Uh, that'll give us a little bit of extra mana, but that's going to allow them to swing in. Yeah, we'll see. Let, let's see what they end up rolling out for the turn. Okay, so they're going to get down Minarch, which is going to... I think, do they have enough mana? They're going to go for the activated ability. Yeah, they. I think, unfortunately, they do have enough mana to go for the three mana and four, because they've got seven total mana. So they can turn a Tempsis into an artifact and then gain control of it, which is... Uh, Maybe we shouldn't have gone for a Timsus, but at this point right now, I think that's, since we have no card draw in the hand, Tezzeret grabbing an artifact is nice, but that doesn't do much. Um, at this point, I think it's just an uphill battle either way with them being able to generate that much mana. Okay, and our opponent, uh, they got off to a pretty good, <laughs> they had a pretty good turn last turn. I think they went for Mind Slaver. Um, that's going to take control of our turn. They did end up gaining control of a Timsis. Uh, maybe I could have seen that play and not gotten down a Timsis. Um, that might have been better for us to not let them steal it with Minarch. Uh, but at this point in our hand right now, you can see where, you know, what we've got going on. It's just a lot of good utility pieces for the deck. We just don't really have any counter magic. We don't have any ways to bounce something back. So, um... I wasn't sure what sort of mana they could generate, but with the Tempsis getting down, at least that gives us some sort of way to draw a few more cards, because Tezzeret gets us an artifact, Trophy Mage gets us an artifact, but outside of that, um, what we had in our hand at the time wasn't that good, so going for Tempsis is basically what we needed to end up doing, so uh, we'll see if our opponent's going to go for the minus, uh, they simply just get down Tezzeret, which they can deal with uh, by swinging in next turn. The other good thing is they don't have any... Um, not to worry, oh, but they've got Academy Ruins on top of their library, so that's just going to be the Mind Slaver lock on top of your, yeah, and then they can just cast it with Future Sight. Yeah, good game. We're going to scoop it up on this one. We've seen enough on this. That's going to be, uh, <laughs> yeah, they've got Mind Slaver into Academy Ruins, and basically how that works is um, they put uh, Mind Slaver on top of their library with Academy Ruins. They go for the Future Sight ability. You can play the top card of your library. They gain control of our turn. Then they just start swinging in and dealing combat damage to us to close the game out. So good game to our opponent. Um, you can definitely see what we're trying to go for with an attempt this deck. You know, this is my first starting point with the deck um, as these new commanders come out. And um, I'm not rushing them out, but, you know, I get an idea down and I uh, just kind of jump into gameplay just to kind of see how it flows. And I really do like the, the kind of the feel of the converted mana cost. The uh, curve of the deck is really nice. It's nothing really that wonky. And you can see where if we weren't just playing against, you know, straight up mono blue, we would have got some really good stuff down. Um, that Psychonic Rift from our opponent really set us back on tempo. Um, but that's how magic goes. You know, our opponent took advantage of it a little bit quicker than we can. And uh, they got to the mana race quicker than we did. And they were able to generate that mana. Um, if we run into some cantrips, if we run into some, you know, something like Archive with Tezzeret, then we start drawing those cards. Um, you can definitely see where it's not just necessarily a combat deck with the Thames. It's, you can go for that pinging damage. And then once you just have your draw go hand of a ton of cards in your hand, uh, you can win the game that way. But... Wonderful game, enjoyed it. Lots of back and forth. It's always good to get mono blue versus mono blue, and our opponent showed the power of a mono blue artifact deck. It is uh, pretty brutal to play against sometimes. They fought through a Psychonic Rift and a Hercules Recall, and so, hey, more power to them. So, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.